Did you hear the bell? I don't know. We welcome you to worship here at Sharon United Methodist Church. We're located on the corner of M52 and Pleasant Lake Road, just outside of Manchester, Michigan. We've got a few people in the room today as we're back in person as well as online, and uh, it's church. If you want to be a part of uh, what we're doing here online and see, uh, see all the behind-the-scenes way that a broadcast happens, we'd love for you to join us. All you need to do is go to our website, send us a message, and say, hey, how do I sign up? Usually on the website by uh, Friday, there's a place there to sign up. It helps us know who's coming, how many chairs we need, all that kind of good stuff. The website, SharonUMChurch.org. If you go there, you can learn about our ministry and our mission efforts, some of the things that we're engaging our community with, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute. There is a, a drop-down menu there for prayer. You can send us a prayer request. Our intercessory prayer team meets regularly every week to lift up these prayers of the people before the Lord. Also, if you would like someone from that team to pray with you, uh, they can happen in person here at the church immediately following worship, or we can set up a Zoom uh, connection a Zoom meeting where if for the, our, those who are online, they can, you can Zoom in and join with a, a couple members of the team. Send us an email. That's the way that that needs to happen so that um, we can be in touch with you. Uh, pray at sumc dot, at gmail.com would be that uh, way to get to the intercessory prayer team. But through the website, you can contact us in a couple different ways. Also on the website, there's a place to give electronically, of course. It's safe, it's secure, and it helps. We're thankful for everyone who's been able to do that uh, through these many months that we've been online now. Thank you so much. It's May 9th, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of those who celebrate today. Um, we all have a mother, and I pray that that uh, is a pleasant memory. If she's still living, would you... Uh, Give her a call. Your mom would appreciate that. I'm looking at my notes. Did I hit everything? I think I did. He's saying, yes, you did. Hey, we're glad you're here. And we invite you now to come into an attitude of prayer, an attitude of worship, an attitude of, of connection with God, for God is present, and he's going to speak to your heart this very day. Our call to worship comes to us from Psalm 98. Listen now as Marlene Uphouse, one of our members, comes and shares uh, the Word of God. Good morning. I'm going to be reading the 98th Psalm. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst forth into a jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. This is the end of the reading. Amen. Shout for joy. We don't have trumpets, but we do have a musical number. Uh, it's Amazing Grace. The tune's Amazing Grace. Uh, with some uh, trad non-traditional words, one of my favorite modern uh, hymn writers is uh, Carolyn Winfrey Gillette, and uh, she has penned this song, uh, this hymn, When You Are Praying. And so enjoy this at home as we, uh, as we sing quietly to uh, Amazing Grace.
Amen and amen. I invite you now to uh, come with me before the Lord in a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle within us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be made anew, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Gracious God, by the light of that Holy Spirit, you instruct the hearts of your faithful. Grant by that same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And amen. It is the uh, sixth Sunday of Easter, and our gospel lesson for today comes to us from St. John, uh, like last week, chapter 15, and I'm repeating a little bit of 15 uh, to get us into the text. Uh, you'll note that the, the scripture is reading from uh, verse 5 through to verse 17. Listen for the word of the Lord. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love one another. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. So uh, one day you're there, and uh, the wealthiest person in the world, in thanksgiving for the outstanding service that you have rendered unto them, has come up and awarded you a blank check. One check. They say, no amount is too much. Just fill it out and I'll gladly sign it. There's one requirement. You must now tell me how you're going to spend the money before you fill out the check. And so you ask for, maybe you'll write a number down. Can you get that many zeros in the chat box? How about enough money to eradicate malaria from Africa? See, the United Methodist Church, along with, uh, let's see, oh yeah, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and along with some other partners, we've worked to do that and we're making great success. What would you ask for that would require great sums of money? Is there a blank check? So, does God give out blank checks? I mean, I just heard it. I thought I heard it a couple times in that reading from John. Can we ask God for anything that we want and have the expectation that we're going to receive it from God? Verse 7 if you remain in me and I in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. Kind of sounds like a blank check. I mean, whatever you wish? Yes? No? What do you think? Does God give out a blank check? Maybe in the chat box. Just let me know. Let the other people know. See, 
last week when I was looking at John 15, uh, I noted to us how um, this word that gets translated as remain is remains a modern word. The old-fashioned word, the obsolete word was um, abide. But we don't talk about abide. So remain in me and I in you. There's a, it's a sense of mutual indwelling. We are in Christ and Christ is in us. There's a... Uh, there's this organic connectedness with Jesus that's implied, and, and when it's nurtured by the Holy Spirit, when that connectedness, it flows from Jesus to us and us to the Lord, we can ask, but also fruit is produced. Fruit that, that God wants to produce in us and, and through our lives. It, it comes back, we remember, it comes back to the cross, as we saw, Right? So one, one beam reaches upward to God and, and the other reaches outward to others. Fruit comes when our upward look leads to an outward reach. Verse 7, but you did hear the conditional clause, right? If you remain in me and I in you, John 14, verse 14, he says, You may ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. In, in my name. Hold on. In fact, in the church, we, we teach people, when you pray, ask in Jesus' name. So what does that mean, though? It's not some, some magic word that, uh, an incantation, you know, abracadabra, poof, and it happens. It's not that at all. In the Bible, the name, when we speak of someone's name, we're speaking about their character. To pray in Jesus' name means to pray in the character of Jesus. And so, if you think about it, it rules out any selfish ambition. I'm going to I'm going to write a big number so that I can get that really fancy house and car but that's not praying in Jesus' name. Prayer, prayer is at the heart of our relationship, of our abiding, of our remaining in Jesus. This mutual indwelling where we are connected to him and he's connected to us, it, it happens as we pray. He abides and lasts, he endures, he continues, he remains. I like this is from last week's. He hangs in and holds on to us as we remain in him. And the Holy Spirit comes and, and helps us. Helps us to have this connection. Helps us in remaining in Jesus. Helps us in being connected to him. Helps us in our praying. I don't know. I, through the years... Uh, in, in other conversations with folks, prayer has often thought to be, uh, as some of my non-religious friends say, yeah, it's just a religious gimmick, right? It, it's, it's, the, it's what you guys do so that you can get the Almighty over onto, onto your side of the street, over into your corner, so, so that God's on your side, so your team always comes out victorious. Is it? I mean, is prayer just a, a device for overcoming God's indifference? For God to, to, to perform, getting God to, to perform some special favor because we're really asking and really asking hard. But again, when a, that sounds a lot more like magic and not a mutual indwelling. Prayer, seen as the way in which we participate in the life of God, this, this mutual indwelling that leads to the production of fruit is so important. And, and it's more important, I suspect, for us than it is for God. I mean, we know that the testimony of Scripture and the testimony of the church through the centuries is that God loves. God wants the fruit of love to grow in us, to, to connect with us, to to change and to transform us. This love that we find in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's not just so that we might become better people. 
uh, but rather so that as this love flows into us, it produces a better world where the love of Jesus is more evident today than it has been yesterday. See, prayer, <clears throat> prayer's not so much for God's benefit, it is for ours. Prayer's not overcoming God's reluctance. It's, it's really laying hold to God's willingness. God, God wants to love. And when we pray and we are connected with God, that love begins to be experienced. And in return, we can say thank you. We can praise the Lord as the psalmist spoke about it. Prayer, prayer doesn't so much change God's mind as it releases the power of God's love. This mutual indwelling of the vine and the branches. Uh, St. Augustine, um, uh, leader in the church many, many centuries ago, said, without God, we cannot. Without us, God will not. That's what this mutual indwelling is. Another, another author wrote, it seems that God waits for our cooperation before certain things can be accomplished. The mistake often made is that while we clearly see that we need to cooperate with God on a physical level, and so uh, we pray not only for health, but we pray for the doctors, we pray for the medicine, for the surgery, the, nurse, the, the nursing that goes on, uh, the, the ways in which this is how we cooperate with God. The problem is that we don't realize, we don't understand how this also happens on a spiritual level. When we're connected to the source of all life as the branches to the vine, then the power flows. The power bears fruit. The power to love happens as he first loved us. Our whole notion of what prayer is as this, this spiritual connectiveness to Jesus, between Jesus and his followers, it, it, depends on, it depends on our notion of who God is. Who do you think God is? That's how you will pray. Again and again, Jesus tells us that God, God loves. God's a loving, heavenly Father who, who could not possibly love you any more than God already does. I, uh, former superintendent uh, here, uh, Mark Spall, used to say, uh, there's nothing you can do to make God love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you less. God loves you. This is, this is how Jesus spoke of his Father, how he witnessed to who this God that he understood intimately. So prayer, prayer it doesn't change God's attitude towards us. How can, how can God love us any less than the complete way in which he loves us as he gave his one and only son, Jesus, to die that we might have life? No, prayer doesn't change God's attitude towards us. I mean, think about it. If, if it did then who was that God before we started praying? Did he really love us? Did we have to appease this God? Is prayer like a blank check? I mean, do we pray just so God gives us stuff? See, the short answer is no. No, prayer's not like a blank check. St. Paul, in the second letter to the Corinthian church, states three times, Three times that he prayed to God to, to deliver him from this thorn in the flesh. Some physical ailment that had burdened him through his life. Three times he says. Three times he testifies that he asked God, but how many other times did he pray? And every time the thorn remained. Instead, what Paul testifies to, this is 2 Corinthians 12, 9, Instead, what God said is, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. God's all-encompassing love is enough. It's all that you need for strength. Real strength comes from being a friend of Jesus, and it comes, it comes into its own when you're most weak, 
when you're most incomplete, when you're most in need. See, God didn't answer the prayer the, the way that Paul wanted it, but God did answer the person, and he gave the strength to keep on keeping on. The circumstance, oh, of having a thorn in the flesh, of being desperate for God to act, it doesn't, you have a choice. Who is this God? Does he love you? Then abide with him. Remain in him. And he'll give you the strength you need. It's been said that God can, uh, usually answers our prayers one of two ways. Either God changes the circumstances, or God supplies the power to overcome them. The great reformer Martin Luther said it this way. He said, a Christian knows that they're not refused what they have prayed for and finds, in fact, that they are helped in all troubles and that God gives power to bear the troubles and to overcome them, which, which is, in fact, just the same way as taking away the troubles and making it no longer misfortune or distress, but seeing it has been overcome. Does God give blank checks when we pray? No, I don't, I don't think so at all. But what God does give, and he gives freely, is, is the love that flows from him, the joy that we can find in Christ Jesus. And as we heard in the gospel reading, not just joy and love, but being a friend, a friend of Jesus, a friend of God. Friends who are, who are chosen, chosen to be a member in the family of God, chosen to, form, to be formed through the work of the Holy Spirit that they might bear, that we might bear fruit. I want to tell you a story about somebody that, um, someone who is praying and someone who, uh, at our household, we're praying for. And, and we're, just, we're just two, Jan and I are just two who are praying, uh, there's many who are praying. Uh, this is the story of Amanda, and Amanda is married uh, to my nephew, Matt. Man, they're the kind of folks that you want to be around. They're a dynamic couple, now in their 30s. Um, they've been married, um, I don't know, about five years, maybe. Um, they have jobs that they really love, and they're and their bosses really love them. They're industrious. And, and just recently, they joined a new church start in their community, and it's, it's going well. And they're very excited about it. And last year, um, they got pregnant, and then they lost the baby. And this year, they got pregnant, and they lost the baby. And then Amanda discovered a lump, and has begun a journey with breast cancer. Here's what she wrote last month. Each step of this process, we've been asking God to show up. We asked the baby to grow strong. It didn't. We asked for a miracle when the heartbeat was too slow. It didn't happen. We asked that if we're going to have to suffer a loss, that it would happen quickly. It wasn't quick. We asked that we would be able to move on after the D&C procedure. I ended up with two weeks of complications. We were really struggling with the question of why God wasn't showing up, why he wasn't answering our prayers. It was a crisis of faith. And then I opted for a D&C procedure to treat my miscarriage, partly to hurry things up, but also because it gave us the option to have a genetic test done. Since this is the second in a row, we're starting to look, she writes, into fertility issues as the cause. The doctor told me that the fetal tissue sample was shipped on a truck that got stuck in the crazy snowstorm a few weeks ago. She wrote this in early March. The truck was unable to maintain the correct temperature, and the majority of the tissue samples on that truck was compromised, but not ours. Our sample somehow made it through and is viable for testing. This was not the miracle we had anticipated, nor the one that we had hoped for. Frankly, we didn't even consider that the sample might not make it. But guys, it did. 
God showed up in a completely unexpected way, but God showed up. And she concludes, I'm not sure what miracle you're hoping for, what suffering or challenges you're facing, but I do know that God shows up. Ask God to reveal himself, to show up in a big way, and he will. Maybe not in the way you expected, but he will. God shows up as we pray. A blank check, relief from suffering, not always. And yet connected to the vine, connected to Jesus. Love is is always flowing to us, always flowing through us, that we might bear the fruit, that we might testify, that we might share love, that we might express joy, that others, others would discover that they too need to be connected to Jesus. May you discover, my friends, today, not, not the answer to your blank check prayer. Oh, and Many of us carry that kind of prayer. We have a, God, you need to show up. But may you discover the one who loves you so much that what you do receive is more, more than than you could ever expect. For in the end, for in the end, my friend, the love of Jesus will carry you, strengthen you, and God God will show up. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen Amen indeed. We have a time to respond to God always uh, as we listen to his word and we respond first and foremost through our prayers. And so I invite you to come with me into this time of prayer. Great are you, O God, and greatly to be praised. Before we were born, you knew who we were. You knew our inward parts. And like a master craftsperson, you went to work to knit us together in our mother's wombs. We thank you, Lord, as we gather this morning. We thank you for our moms. We thank you for for those who nurtured us, who strengthened us, who led us to this day. The more that we think of you, O oh God, the more we realize that, that even if we could come up with enough descriptions and, and thoughts about how great you are, as the psalmist attempts week after week, uh, to think about how your majesty and your power, your, your mercy, your love, your grace, Lord, it, we could never come to the end of that list. It would not be enough to exhaust your creative wonder. We marvel at the extent of your wisdom and graciousness and pray simply that we might have the serenity to accept those things that escape our limited sight, that go beyond the frontier of our understanding. Lord, help us. Help us to have the courage to rightly discern your leading and your guidance and then to follow in the way We're in need of your mercy, Lord, for the sin that we detest. It seems to cling to us the ever more stronger. But there are circumstances and situations of our lives, some of them quite old in the past, that that still hold sway over our lives, and we need help, Lord. We need help. So come, Holy Spirit, and with the mighty wind of grace, blow out the old that the new might be born in us today. There are some things that we, we can do for ourselves that, Lord, we can examine our attitude, we can watch our words, we can change our behavior. But, Lord, there are some things that we cannot do. We cannot redeem our own lives. We cannot work our way to heaven. We cannot will our way to salvation. We confess that we need that mutual indwelling. We need to find ourselves connected to you and you to us. We confess that we need your help. And so we pray. We pray, you who are the custodian of the future, that we trust you to work now and in the days yet ahead, 
right now, right here, come and, and work in the lives, uh, not only of us, uh, our life, but work in the lives of our loved ones. And so we pray, Lord, we pray for the ministry of the church worldwide, the ministry of the United Methodist Church, and the role that we have to play in your kingdom. We pray for, for our bishop and for our district superintendent. We pray for the pastors that we partner with. We pray for our mission in Haiti at Mizak. We pray for the Luji United Methodist Church in the DRC. We pray for Pastor Kaur and his ministry there. We pray, Lord, for those who today find themselves in a desperate circumstance. They need healing, healing of their body. As we remember Amanda and Matt, we pray for those burdened by cancer especially. But Lord, we also pray for those who are in desperate need of, of a healing to come to their mind, come to their relationships. There's so many, Lord, that seem confused, and so we pray, Lord, that they would see the light, the clear light of your love, and know and experience that healing. For those who are caught in the grip of despair over economics and employment, over COVID, and Lord, would you come? Come to them. For those who find themselves walking through deep, dark valleys where the shadow of death is so prominent, come and shine the light. Speak your word, your word that you have gone through death into the life everlasting, and you beckon, you beckon us to follow. Lord, we rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, and praise you and celebrate you for your kindness and your mercy and your love. Lord, we continue to pray for Paul Whalen and Trevor Reed that this day, this day might be the day that they're released from the prisons and they're sent home. We pray for those in authority that can make this happen. We pray, Lord, that your will might be done. We pray, for there was a day when we said, Lord, we do not know how to pray. How shall we pray? And so you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. That concludes our time of worship here online with you and here in, in the room with those who have been in person. We're so thankful that you have joined us in this way. Again, SharonUMChurch.org is the website, and there you can submit prayer requests, there you can make an offering. We're so thankful that uh, we can connect this way. A couple of announcements are coming up. We're offering in conjunction with some partners uh, a four-week mental health workshop. Um, COVID's had an impact on a lot of people, and we want, uh, we want people to come and experience uh, some tools on how to grow through this time with resilience. Uh, you'll find that on our website. It begins uh, Monday, May 17th, uh, 7 to 8 o'clock. Uh, you can do it in person. Come to the hall here just off the corner of M52 and Pleasant Lake, or you can zoom in, and there's more information for that as well. And again, we're doing food box giveaway number three with uh, some other uh, congregations here in Manchester, starting at 10 o'clock at Manchester High School parking lot. And what we want you to do is come get a box for your family. Be blessed at this time. Take a few more boxes and bless your neighbors. We hope you can uh, be part of that as well. The website will give you a way to uh, sign up, volunteer, and, and do all that good stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. There, you can contact us through the website. What a great day the Lord has given to us. And I hope that as you walk into this day further, 
you'll just experience that joy, that peace, that great love that God has for each one of us. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord lift up his face and shine upon you and there you discover his almighty grace. May the Lord uh, turn towards you and may you know his peace now and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.